Hello and welcome. I am Kim Malaliu, Deputy Chair of the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, and very pleased and happy that Jose Otero has invited me to speak today at the 5G Americas virtual meeting of ICT experts. So thank you very much to 5G Americas and to Jose, and I will be sharing my thoughts on an holistic approach to addressing connectivity gaps in Trinidad and Tobago. I'm gonna to start with a little information about my country, Trinidad and Tobago, and then my organization, Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, introduce the whole notion of connectivity and its gaps, and then um, share with you our thoughts on the elements of a, a holistic gap filling framework for connectivity gaps, and then close off with a case study to demonstrate how some of these elements fit together within a framework around a particular um, community of interest. So let's get started. Trinidad and Tobago is a two island republic in the Caribbean, we speak English. Our land area is just over 5,000 square kilometers, population 1.3 million, and we have about 400,000 households. On the map, we are roughly 1,600 miles from Miami as the crow flies. And uh, for any conversation about connectivity, which refers to ICT connectivity, it is very important that we consider the topography and the demography of our countries, the areas, the surface areas of interest. So here's a map on the left of the elevation of Trinidad and, Trinidad and Tobago. And you would see that Trinidad um, comprises three distinct mountain ranges, the least of which is in the south, but they all run west to east, and in Tobago, the overall island, which you see at the northeast of Trinidad, is a mountainous, dominated by a main ridge. And this topography of the country, of course, has a direct bearing on the ability of service providers to provide um, connectivity solutions at reasonable cost. So we must take this into consideration. Our population um, density, you can see the geographical distribution of our population density um, on the right, where the darkest greens uh, indicate the highest density of population. Our country is um, served by several submarine fibers and, uh, um, and also by terrestrial fiber. In this case, we in this slide, we are showing, we are using the fixed broadband coverage as a proxy for terrestrial fiber. And if you recall the demography of Trinidad and Tobago, that the broad, fixed broadband coverage coincides um, very well with the geographical distribution of our population. The services, ICT services by locality, you would see here that there are a number of different ICT services that are on offer and subscriptions um, uh, shown here for fixed internet, pay TV and fixed voice. You will see though, interestingly enough, that there are significant proportion portions of the population who do not at all subscribe um, to either fixed internet, pay TV or fixed voice. We, we collect our data um, disaggregated across many parameters. In this case, you can see urban and rural, and of course, overall in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, another background uh, um, set of information about my country is our digital readiness as determined, as assessed by the UNDP last year. The UNDP Digital Readiness Assessment considers five thematic areas, infrastructure, government, regulation, business, and people. And they have assessed us last year as 
being falling at the systematic stage of digital readiness, which is characterized by high quality coverage available in all cities, exploring rural areas, shared vision and strategy that the, for, um, for the government pillar, vocally encouraged in terms of regulation, we have in place initial policies and laws well established. In terms of business, there is cross-sector collaboration. And in terms of people, we shine a little bit even more with high levels of digital literacy and penetration. Now, a little bit about our organization. The Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago is the independent regulator responsible for the transformation and regulation of the telecommunications and broadcasting sectors. We were established in 2004 by the enactment of our Telecommunications Act 2001, which was subsequently amended in 2004. Um, the objects of our act um, are manifold, for example, to create an open telecommunications market with, of course, conditions for fair competition to ensure the orderly development of telecommunications, which is to safeguard, enrich, and strengthen society's social, cultural, and economic well-being. And of course, to protect and promote the, the public interest. Also, to facilitate universal access, specifically to telecommunications, to in encourage investment in telecommunications, and to regulate the broadcasting sector. Our strategic focus at this point, at this time, um, comprises four different areas, regional harmonization and empowerment, organizational effectiveness, sustainability of the industry, and uh, very importantly to our discussion today, is universal quality connectivity. We consider universal service to be the condition in which ICTs are available, they are accessible, they are affordable, and they are delivered on a household or individual basis. We are guided by several instruments in our endeavors to fill connectivity gaps. For example, the Telecommunications Act, which I mentioned before, National Digital Transformation Strategy at the country level, and then a number of instruments that we have prepared at the authority, which include frameworks for universal service, for 5G, for the authorization of white space devices, and um, several others. We also have a number of implementation plans, including universal service initiatives um, plan. And then there are other guiding instruments that we are very mindful of and we work with. For example, the central bank has recently introduced its FinTech policy and there are others along the same line. In terms of connectivity, when we, uh, when we wish to address the issue of connectivity and understand its gaps, the two um, uh, parameters that we consider um, predominantly are digital divide and more recently digital inclusion. While digital divide refers to the width of the gap between those with and those without access to ICTs, and it occurs between and within population groups, such as persons with disabilities, age groups, socioeconomic status, etc. And it also occurs between and within geographic areas, for example, physical communities, urban rural classification, etc. On the other hand, digital inclusion refers to the depth of ICT gap. And this considers factors that are necessary to use ICTs effectively. And these include ICT skills, the motivation to use ICT in the first place, and trust in ICT. We measure traditionally the digital divide using the the ICT Development Index. And uh, um, this comprises three sub-indices, ICT access, usage, and skills. And each of these sub-indices um, sub are broken down into a number of indicators. Traditional indicators, for example, 
fixed telephone subscriptions per 100 inhabitants, um, individuals using the internet, men, um, mean years of schooling, etc. More recently, as I mentioned, the interest is in digital inclusion, which looks at the depth. And this is measured using the Digital Inclusion Index, DII, which includes four sub-indices, ICT access, ICT participation and usage, trust and confidence, and the readiness or digital literacy. Each of these um, in the sub-indices is again broken down into a number of indicators. TAT has measured the IDI over a number of uh, um, different times. For example, in 2013, coming back again in 2021. And in these measure for these measurements, we see that our indices have progressively increased. For example, in 2013, the ICT access moved from 0.66 to 0.73, the ICT use um, sub-index moved from 0.67 to 0.88, um, ICT skills from 0.40 to 0.71. Very importantly, in 2021-2022, we conducted a digital inclusion survey. And this was minded to undergird policies, plans, and projects that set out to measure the number of ICT users, determine the extent of the digital divide, benchmark our development progress against other countries, identify, very importantly, identify population groups and geographic areas most at risk of digital exclusion, inform our choice of relevant initiatives, support the national vision and ICT plan, and support international obligations such as UN Sustainable Development Goals and the ITU Connect 2020, 2030 Agenda. The data was comprehensive that we, we found, and we have created a number of, of dashboards. For example, here you can see for in the area of infrastructure and access, we have found that the population, 100% of the population is covered by mobile cellular network, 100% by 3G, 75% by 4G. We have data on the mobile phone ownership, disaggregated by female and male. We have data on the ICT access at home, at the individual and at the household level, uh, mobile and fixed telephone subscriptions, mobile and fixed broadband subscriptions. We also have um, data that we have dashboarded on internet use. For example, the percentage of the population using the internet, individuals using the internet, females um, using the internet, um, et cetera, broad, broadband traffic, and a number of enablers and barriers. We have um, classified ICT skills and quantified the population of the, the um, ICT users according to their skills level. Individuals with basic skills, as you would imagine, um, is a higher percentage than those with standard skills, and the least of which, of course, is those individuals with advanced skills. So all of this data is um, very important for our planning. But we found lots of other data. It's very, very rich, the findings. For example, the um, the age groups that most use um, different devices, um, desktop, laptop, tablet, you won't be surprised at these at these findings, but it always is useful to actually do the measurements. Um, those persons, the age group of those persons who have used the internet most and use the mobile phone most, of course, you're not surprised, 25 to 34. We've also found that um, uh, there, there is a higher percentage of, of women users, which is, was surprising. Um, highest educational level, um, of course, um, uh, tertiary, etc. So our 
survey has also revealed the particulars about ICT skills. For example, those skilled in using copy and paste tools, those skilled in creating electronic presentations with presentation software, et cetera. Very importantly, none of the above, and we've disaggregated by youth and adults. <clears throat> now, uh, we start to get to the interesting stuff, the more interesting stuff, the more detailed. So the reasons, for example, for a no internet use. We've done this by locality, urban, rural, and of course, aggregate across all Trinidad and Tobago. The most common reasons we have found are that respondents who do not use the internet see no need in using the internet. So among those, use, those who do not use the internet, 33% say that the reason is that they have no use or no, no need to use the internet. And 28% say that the cost of the service is what prohibits them from using the internet. Of course, as always, we have disaggregated by rural, urban, gender, et cetera. So the Telecoms Authority of Trinidad and Tobago utilizes data and analysis as the basis for its plans and actions across all of the zones of interest and responsibility of the authority. In the case of connectivity, we use very richly the findings of the 2007-2013 digital um, IDI, um, uh, National Digital Divide Surveys, with repeats done in 2021, and then the newly introduced National Digital Inclusion Survey in 2021. So these are very much the focal point of our base for um, planning for addressing connectivity gaps in the country. But we also use a number of other data um, resources. For example, we gather data and produce annual market reports and quarterly market updates. We conduct consumer surveys and conduct gap analyses. We maintain a multi-layer GIS map so that we can track um, against topography and demography um, the many parameters that are important in the understanding and resolution of issues related to connectivity gaps. Our general strategy is regulatory adaptation. We started, and I was on the board, at the inaugural board um, several years ago. We started at the very beginning with all regulators around the world with Generation One regulation, which was, of course, regulating um, public monopolies using a command and control approach. We matured into Generation Two regulation, opening the markets, partial liberalization, privatization across the layers over into generation three, enabling investment, innovation, and access. A dual focus at that time on stimulating competition in service and content delivery on the one hand and consumer protection on the other. We are well into the generation four regulation, which is characterized by integrated regulation and is very much led by economic and social policy goals. So we are very well embedded in G4, but making very significant strides into generation five regulation, which is very much characterized by collaboration, inclusive di dialogue and harmonized approach across sectors. We have in fact been classified as residing in the transitioning stage from G4 to G5 by the ITU. And uh, in this uh, transition period, um, recognizing the importance for generation five regulation is collaboration. So I wanna share with you of just a few examples of the different types of collaboration that the Telecommunications Authority is currently engaged with in. <clears throat> with the French regulator, ENFR, we are collaborating on the harmonization of VHF and UHF bands for terrestrial broadcasting. Why? Because 
some of our neighbors are French speaking and uh, are regulated by ANFR. And of course, radio frequencies do not respect geographical boundaries. So there is need in the cases where jurisdictions are in close proximity, there is need to collaborate and harmonize the use of spectrum. Another very different type of, uh, of international cooperation is, uh, and collaboration is with the Federal Telecommunications Institute of Mexico, recently signed an MOU for the exchange of information, documentation, experiences, and practices related to the areas of joint interests of our organizations. Um, we have for years from the founding time of the multi-stakeholder technical group um, referred to as the Spectrum Management Task Force convened by the Caribbean Telecommunications Union. Telecoms Authority of Trinidad and Tobago is very active in uh, this stakeholder group, which informs the development of regionally harmonized, when I say regionally now, I mean across the Caribbean, regionally harmonized policies for the planning and management of RF spectrum. TAT is an active member and chairs the Spectrum Management Steering Committee of the task force. So we are also collaborating with agencies in entirely different sectors with whom we share overlapping regulatory functions. A prime example is the Civil Aviation Authority. <clears throat> and we are collaborating with them on the specification of roles and responsibilities in these areas of overlap. Also collaborating to share information and around areas of cooperation. This is very important both for recognition of low resources and uh, um, uh, high efficiency. So this, these types of cross-sector collaborations, characteristic of, five, of Generation 5 regulation is absolutely crucial. Local collaboration also with the Customs and Excise Division for border control. We are proposing this specific form of collaboration, though we have years of, of, of intera close interaction with customs and excise, but we are now proposing a, a formal collaboration for information sharing. And the aim of course is the harmonization of the roles and functions relating to the certification of telecommunications and broadcasting equipment. A very different sector entirely again, Example is the banking sector. So we are collaborating with the central bank to ensure that there is adequate connectivity to support, to support the fintech policy. Remember that all electronic financial services and products, including financing, investment, payment, insurance, and financial information in fintech, they are all delivered through digital channels with almost all of which require connectivity. <clears throat> so, um, a different, entirely different type of collaboration is around the area of the promotion of uh, innovation in the ICT sector. So, uh, the Telecoms Authority is collaborating with the University of the West Indies on a conformance and interoperability regulatory sandbox. This is a absolutely wonderful initiative under which the university is allowed to develop prototype RF devices and field test these devices using particular frequency bands in a controlled environment with a view to encouraging and facilitating the development, testing and adoption of local techno technological innovations. Very important initiative and a model for other sand regulatory sandboxes that can be facilitated in our country and across the region. Um, local collaboration also with the Ministry of Digital Transformation and Secondary Roads Company, because is the access we have had, traditionally we have had problems with the road access to critical infrastructure sites for, for communications, FM radio, TV and telecommunications towers in particular. So we've collaborated um, to, to, to rejuvenate the road and drain works en route to particular critical infrastructure, set, infrastructure sites 
And that's a wonderful initiative. Other forms of, of local collaboration, for example, with the ministry, our line ministry, the Ministry of Digital Transformation in the um, development of ICT access centers. These are public access technology centers in underserved communities. This is working very, very well. And we have um, continuing rollout of these centers. Minist We've had several um, collaborations with the Ministry of Education. You see the, 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 how they are very different sectors, all benefiting from um, collaborations with the authority. We collaborated to um, facilitate the donation of many ICT devices and internet connectivity for students over COVID and are now engaging in a school bandwidth upgrade study to determine the interventions um, to improve school connectivity. So questions like how are existing bandwidth capacity um, being utilized and what is the potential impact of a bandwidth upgrade? Also capacity building, collaborating with the government, also the a particular ministry, our line ministry, as well as the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, and the private sector, uh, Microsoft and content providers to facilitate, to facilitate the design and, and delivery of capacity building programs to many individuals to utilize digital tools, platforms, um, et cetera. Social development, mo um, our collaboration with the Ministry of Social Development, and again, another entirely different sector. Um, and this one is around um, persons with disabilities. This is one of my favorites, um, through which we have facilitated the subsidy of mobile phones with assistive features to persons who are visually and or hearing impa impaired or have a disability. A related initiative and collaboration is with the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, and that is around a Caribbean video assistance service, CVAS, which enables persons with disabilities to communicate via sign language through interpreters as relays. Excellent, excellent initiative. Now, <clears throat> we've talked about geographic areas, communities, um, that are underserved. And we have talked about a particular community, not geographic, but a particular community that is a, a community of persons with disabilities. We have also talked about the, uh, the multi-sector collaboration that is absolutely essential to address issues of connectivity and quality. But here's an interesting community that is very much at risk, and that is small-scale fishers. Fishing is often ranked as the most dangerous job in the world. 32,000 annual fatalities at sea. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> small-scale fishers, who comprise 93% of the Caribbean commercial capture fisheries, are most exposed and otherwise marginalized. These are, are fishers who go to sea, in vessels that are undecked and generally without um, power or um, communications, except with cell phone. And you would, you would notice that 98% of our um, exclusive economic zone in the Caribbean is ocean. So I've mentioned that we have done measurements of the IDI and the DI. All of these measurements have been taken on land in Trinidad and Tobago. So the question is, what about connectivity in our national waters? This is Trinidad on the bottom left, Tobago on the top right. And what you see there is a set of, of zones of coverage of VHF radio, which is recognized by the UN as the essential communications device for vessels at sea. The cell phone is, a, um, is an ancillary device. The primary device is the VHF radio, but that is the, the channel over which fishers um, can get access to information and communications. So that is, in fact, 
the context appropriate IC device and channel for small scale fishers at sea. So Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago has partnered with the International Telecommunication ITU and the Caribbean Telecommunications Youth um, CTU um, and, uh, for an initiative um, referred to as Smart Seas. And this is supported by the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. It sets out to increase the resilience and preserve the lives of small scale fishers through ICTs with an emphasis on the enabling environment. And we will see that this enabling environment is multidimensional. And to, in fact, strengthen the enabling environment, there are very, very many points of focus that are required. So the Smart Sea scope, the scope in terms of the problem area is maritime communications. In terms of the beneficiary sector, it is small scale fisheries. In terms of geography, it is the Maritime <clears throat> Rescue Coordination Center of um, jurisdictions of uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And that is to say, Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent, and itself, Trinidad and Tobago. So this Smart Seas project considers connectivity at sea using the context-appropriate ICT which is the VHF radio primarily and the cellular phone secondarily across these four jurisdictions. Our holistic strategy for addressing connectivity gaps is to address four dimensions, and that is policy and regulation, operations, capacity, and technology. The strategy is transferable to other sectors and marginalized communities. And it is extensible outside of the Trinidad and Tobago MRCC to the Caribbean and worldwide. The outputs, outcomes, the outputs are gap analysis, smart seas toolkit, and agenda for accessible communications at sea. The outcomes are a capacitated ecosystem and an enabling environment. And the impact ultimately is resilient small scale fishers. The Smart Seas project aligns with CITEL's initiatives to expand telecommunications and, site and ICTs in rural, unserved, or underserved areas, as you see here. The full list of CITEL's initiatives are available on CITEL's site. In terms of the outputs to date, the gap analysis has identified um, many gaps across the compliance and operations. Consultations have been held with key agencies. Um, we have held um, assessment and training workshops, developed an uh, online toolkit, um, and will be featured on partners' websites. We are about to conduct a maritime measurement campaign, and we will hold an international workshop on the agenda for accessible communications at sea next March. So the gap analysis shows gaps in compliance with UN conventions and recommendations, gaps in the ecosystem, gaps in the regulatory environment, gaps in the policy environment, gaps in operations, and gaps in capacity. Our toolkit comprises, under regulation, um, some UN compliance tools, checklists, and opportunity estimators, under operations, many different artifacts, ecosystem maps, agency role specification, register of Caribbean coast stations, map of Caribbean coast stations, key website messaging resources, register of incidents at sea, MRCC and coast station survey, UN compliant licensing form, RF measurement planning and execution resources, Trinidad and Tobago measurement strategies and tools, guidelines to specify C area A1, <clears throat> VHL, VHF channel usage specification, and more, much more. Ecosystem maps, very important. This is an example for smart seas. It comprises policy and regulatory environment, actors and resources. Another view of the ecosystem map. Here is the, the 
range of ecosystem engagement we have conducted with different agencies at the national, regional, international levels. This, this is, we have in the, you will see in the presentation, the expansions of the acronyms. We have conducted analytical and empirical studies. Here is an example of the, the responsibilities specifications. <clears throat> we have conducted um, uh, opportunity estimators where we can optimize the activity um, undertaken to um, reduce the effort required and increase the impact. So for the, the gaps we have found, we can then move to deciding on what are the lowest effort opportunities to yield the highest impact. Beyond the objectives, we have created a survey on Caribbean MRCC and coast stations to fill the gaps in the Caribbean obligations to notify the ITU on coast stations and special service stations. And the ITU has approved this survey for formal notification. We are also in consultation with the IMO, International Maritime Organization, on the register of incidents at sea to include fields for the collection of small scale fisheries related incidents. So for this survey, we have created a survey um, and a methodological guidebook to support the survey, as well as a user guide. <clears throat> we have issued the survey to the countries in the MRCC of Trinidad and Tobago. The inputs to the survey are station contact and operations information, which are the fields required by the ITU for notification in its maritime mobile access and retrieval system. <clears throat> there are also some additional fields that we've introduced about station equipment, HR requirements, policy and regulatory information. So the outputs of the survey feed both the ITU notification requirement, but also other resources for the Caribbean. The map of register of Caribbean coast stations, um, the map and register of Caribbean coast stations. So here's the register of the Caribbean coast stations. Here's the map of Caribbean coast stations. And finally, our agenda for accessible communications at sea, which is um, to develop a seed for action by an international community of multiple agents and agencies to tackle the perennial issue of inaccessible communications at sea by small scale fishers. The objective of this activity are to consult with multi-sector stakeholders on the issues, interests, and possible solutions for inaccessible communications at sea for small-scale fishers. To specify a framework to assess the accessibility of services, devices, etc., to small-scale fishers. Host an international two-day workshop to discuss the means for filling gaps in accessibility, in connectivity, including connectivity, but not limited to connectivity. The, the issue of accessibility is greater than the issue of just connectivity. So also to co-author in this community and publish an international agenda for accessible communications at sea for small scale fishers. So you would see that the agenda aligns with the regional initiatives for the Americas under the ITU Connect 2030, AMS 1, 2, 3, and 4. The agenda, just like all of the other components of the Smart Seas Project, looks at various dimensions service and device affordability, service availability, capacity, awareness and adoption, and of course, the enabling environment. We look at different zones of intervention, 
For example, business and service models, devices and services, standards and protocols, policies, regulations, and frameworks, infrastructure, communities of practice, research, innovation, and entrepreneurship. And we take account of the community of all agents and agencies who can both contribute to and benefit from this whole um, holistic strategy to address connectivity. And in conclusion, the Smart Seas is a case study for resource conscious holistic connectivity gap filling. In particular, it adopts an ecosystems approach to connectivity using context appropriate ICTs. It is data driven over the entire connectivity life cycle. It comprises multi-dimensional interventions which span policy and regulation, operations, capacity, and technology, built around the base of the gap analysis and into manifest in an entire toolkit that spans all of these areas. And then is the multi-stakeholder collaboration at the national, regional, and international levels, as well as intra and cross-sectoral spaces that leverages the existing relationships that the Telecoms Authority has developed in other areas of its work and, um, and extends these. So that is a very um, swift flyby the Smart Seas case study for resource conscious holistic connectivity gap filling. The presentation will be available on the 5G Americas website so that you can, if for those who are interested, you can go back and, and see in more detail the content of each slide um, that I have just whizzed by. So thank you again. Um, for listening, that's to you, the audience, and also very much so for 5G Americas, for the opportunity for me to share a little bit about this holistic strategy to fill gaps in connectivity. Thank you.